The movie we're going to look at is a 2018 doc, The Price of Everything. It's on HBO. If you have HBO Max, you can watch it anytime. It's linked below. There's also a link to an interview with the director, Nathaniel Kahn. In that interview, and the movie itself, asks the holy grail question of the art world to summarize, where does one find the value component in modern art? And as you watch this film, ask yourself, how has the value of art changed since 2020's money printing has essentially destroyed price discovery for many assets? And secondly, what changes are to be expected in the art world with the release of NFTs? Later on, we're going to look at a specific stock that ties all this together. The film's title comes from a line in an Oscar Wilde play, and the full quote is read by art collector Stefan Adlis, shown here. There's a lot of uh, people that know the price of everything and the value of nothing. <laughs> we're shown the works of many artists, such as Damien Hirst, and also Larry Poons and Jeff Koons, who were both interviewed thoroughly. Sadly, Stefan Adlis passed away about a year after this came out. What piqued my interest about this film goes back quite a ways. In the 2000 sci-fi film The Cell, there's a brief scene where a cow is given a vivisection. This isn't the whole clip, but if you'd like to see it, it's linked below. Ten years ago, I was re-watching this movie and put this into Google, asking things such as, where did that scene come from? What's the backstory? And I came across this link. And it turns out that scene was inspired from the English artist Damien Hirst. This particular work of his is called and one can clearly see that it was borrowed in the making of The Cell. In early 90s, Damien Hirst has had similar shocking works with real, dead animals preserved in clear glass tanks of formaldehyde. This one featuring a tiger shark, and it was extremely provocative for its time. And other works of his were controversial as well, and still are today. I really like his 60-foot demon statue. This was featured at the Palms in Las Vegas for a few years. But what really struck me is how much money Damien Hirst has made selling his art. He's recently entered the NFT world himself, just last month actually. Right now, his net worth is well north of a half billion. That demon statue sold for $14 million, and he was commissioned to design a one-of-a-kind $100,000 a night suite at the Palms. This was part of a $600 million series of upgrades starting in 2017. Maybe these spending decisions are what doomed the Palms Resort, as they were sold in early 2021 for $650 million. Getting back to the movie, Jeff Koons is another artist who's done very well financially. This stainless steel Popeye sculpture sold for $28 million and was featured in Vegas for about five years. Let's listen to Jeffrey Dietsch, who is Koons' art dealer in the 1990s. All these people would say to me, hey, have you met Jeff Koons? You've got to meet Jeff Koons. He works on Wall Street. Of course, Jeff was working in a bucket shop, like out of the wolf of Wall Street. One of the legends of Wall Street comes in one day and all the, the salesmen are enthralled. You know, you're amazing. And this guy says, you think I'm good? Wait till you see this guy Coons. And they watch Jeff Coons in one phone session go from getting the lead, softening him up, and closing it in one conversation. They were just in awe. They'd never seen this before. And here's Kunz himself discussing the reflective aspect of his art. If you look here at the gazing ball, it's reflecting us right now, right here. So this is the right here, right now. Then there's like this interface where the painting is reflected into the ball. You kind of enter into the painting and you go into the realm of the eternal. You go into this type of connectivity of the past. It's telling you everything it can about where you are in the universe right at this moment. It's generous. Clearly, these people are living on a slightly different planet than the rest of us. Let's watch. What is it that makes a Gerhard Richter painting worth 10 million, 20 million? Quality, and... rarity, the confirmation and consensus that that is a particularly excellent work by curators, market people, critics, etc. You know, the first time we were asked to, um, to guarantee a Jeff Koons work, they said, well, you know, it's an edition of four with an artist proof. And I said, what do you mean? There are fine of these things. <laughs> and, and surely that should reduce the value of this work. of art. But in fact, it's completely the opposite. I mean, actually made it more desirable in the marketplace. He was also the first artist that I became aware of that there was a sort of futures market. This is conceptual art. And sometimes it's provocative. Sometimes it's beautiful. Sometimes it's super dark. A few of my friends have this piece and of course, in Russian tradition, if a few people have it, everyone else must have it. So it's very, very popular piece. Everyone loves it. I write about rich people. 
I'm a journalist, okay? And I write novels and articles about rich people all the time because I find them fascinating. They're incredibly insecure and incredibly neurotic. I live on Park Avenue in Manhattan, okay? I've been to a lot of apartments. There are apartments on the sixth floor, the eighth floor, and the tenth floor of certain buildings that they have the same piece by the same artist on the same wall. Fundamentally, the underlying opportunity here is that there's just a lot of really very wealthy people and they have a lot of capital to deploy. Well, I think it's definitely a robust market, definitely tremendous depth of bidding, particularly for masterpieces, for contemporary works of art. This is a very attractive asset class. And you can throw any kind of rational price discovery on high-end art out the window. So again, where are we left going forward in the face of NFTs? Do NFTs make the investment case for art a better value for an average consumer at the cost of it being perceived as perhaps more derived or repetitive? And how will NFTs affect the high-end art market as well? Share your thoughts in the comments below. What I can tell you is a handful of equities do stand to do well with the resurgence of NFTs in the news. Add to that the recent recovery of Bitcoin heading back above 45000 Unfortunately, a few of these are probably going to resemble pump and dumps, which means you need to get in and out quick, unless, of course, you're able to buy in at or near the bottom. Funko, Liquid Media, Dolphin Entertainment, WiseKey, Jayan. There's a couple others added onto here as well. Not all of these are directly in the NFT space. They could be in the future. And on that note, the one stock we're going to look at in this video is Takun Art, ticker TKAT. I have a couple thousand shares long on this one. Average is in the low sixes. Not a lot of info on this one, unfortunately. And this is where you should be mindful of the disclaimer at the two second intro of the video. The biggest risk is that it's based in China and listed on a US exchange. Huge crackdown very recently by both the SEC and China itself focusing on some of these companies basically misrepresenting themselves. There's actually a documentary about this problem called the China Hustle. It's free to watch on YouTube. And this is what Yahoo Finance says they do. So the financials are lacking, barely making any money. Will they get into NFTs is the big question. That was the main reason for the stock to be pumped in early 2021, as you can see from the spike here. And that would likely include some trading halts, and a word of caution on that, as trading halts to the upside are often met with trading halts later to the downside. And those downside halts could be solved to the tune of 10 to 20%, sometimes as rapidly as a 15, 20 minute span. This is a good write-up on Newegg, which has pumped from about 15 to 79 in a span of a few days, and then crashed back hard to 30 a few days later. The stock's been trading in the fives and sixes for a few weeks now. We can see it being pumped today well over 850, then it came back down to briefly trade under seven, and closed after hours at 724. Do your own research, as this is extremely speculative. If the company can clarify their intent to enter the NFT space, or give any positive guidance, this could run very fast and hard. So far we witnessed from the movie, that per the art world, we're not given a lot of guidance as to the value component of art, let alone NFTs. Hey, if you like the content, feel free to drop a like. Questions, concerns, feel free to add a comment below. This may be nearing the end of these finance related videos and may pivot over to movies more. The issue is the volatility of these stocks just doesn't age very well in the videos. Thanks for watching.